loves. A fruit, you say? Well, fruits typically are seeds with a protective coating around them. So cucumbers are a fruit, whether we use them as a fruit or not. Oftentimes we use them as vegetables. Tomatoes are a fruit and avocados are a fruit. Now, in another lesson, we painted ethylene gas, the plant hormone that causes leafy greens to wilt and turn brown. We painted ethylene gas with a dark, dark brush. But we're gonna flip that coin over and suddenly think about ethylene gas as a positive influence. Here's avocados. One of the things that makes them unique is that they will not ripen on the tree. They'll mature and they'll fall from the tree easily, but they have to ripen off the tree. Um, a way to understand that is to imagine a bunch of bananas that you buy from the store. They're green. They aren't ripe yet, but you keep them on your counter and through the, the magic of ethylene gas, they will turn ripe. The same happens with avocados. So imagine that avocados come from the tree and they're green like this. And a commercial producer might take the green avocados and put them into a special room that they maintain for ripening that has ethylene gas pumped into it. And in short order, you've got ripe avocados. They use the same type of room for um, bananas. Any fruit that will ripen off the tree, even tomatoes can go into this room and they're known as climacteric fruits. They reach climax after having uh, been removed from the, the plant. So let's talk again about avocados. Here's one that's green. It may have come from the tree like this because it's mature but not yet ripe. I give it a squeeze and it's very, very firm, almost like a little rock. Also green and kind of smooth. Now, here's one that's still green, but it's a darker green and it's going towards black. Um, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more supple, but still pretty hard. Uh, it's starting to develop a little bit of a pebbly texture. This one, more supple still. And when they get to this point, I really wanna see how it's coming along, so I might poke it in the nose and see how soft it is here at the tip. Now, there's an interesting little change between this and this. It starts to take on a little bit of a shine, and that's a great sign. Uh, it's also sort of plumping up so that the, the pebbly texture is smoothing out. And then finally, here's one that's completely ripe. It's very soft when I poke it in the nose, and this is ready to be used. Let's say for argument's sake that you have a party on Saturday and today is Wednesday. You go to the store, you wanna serve avocado as guacamole, let's say, and so you look at the avocados and they're already ripe. I would say buy them, take them home, and put them in the refrigerator and that will slow down the ripening process. If on the other hand, all they have is green avocados like this, buy them, take them home, and when you get home, put them into a bag along with another fruit or vegetable that's creating ethylene gas. I think of apples and bananas as both heavy breathers, if you will. And then take that and keep it at warm room temperature, and usually within a day or two, you'll see the color begin to change and they start to soften, and you've got ripe avocados for your party on the weekend. All right, let's get started working with these avocados. The first dish I'd like to make is a ceviche verde, a green ceviche. Um, it doesn't use fish that's served raw. Instead, it uses shrimp. And I've got some shrimp right here. We'll talk about those in a second. Here's some other ingredients that we're going to be using. I've got tomatillos, which are also a fruit that uh, is used as a vegetable. And to begin with, what I'd like to do is take these tomatillos and just peel away the papery husk. These dark green tomatillos that have a lot of um, acid and vegetal flavor to them are what came to me from uh, my distributor. And these that are a little bit riper came to me from the farm that we have right here on the property of the CIA. Uh, most people would say that they should not get really ripe because one of the things that distinguishes a tomatillo is the bright acidity. So I'm gonna use a blend of the two. All right, here's a pot of water and I'm gonna take these tomatillos and I'm gonna put them into the water and just let them cook until they're softened. This big guy I don't need. This, I would say, is just gonna take 
a couple of minutes. The riper they are, the faster it'll go. It'll give us just enough time to talk about the shrimp. Now, when people make ceviche using raw fish, they add acid to it in the form of lime juice usually, and that acidity cooks the fish. It actually makes the proteins denature. They turn opaque and they firm up. Uh, once you've done it, likely you'll fall in love with it. But I like it with fish. I'm not as crazy about it with shell shellfish. Usually when I'm using shellfish like shrimp, I will poach the shrimp a little bit so that it's already cooked before I add the acid. Now, these shrimp right here have already been peeled. The tail section is left on them. I don't really want that, and so I'm going to pull it off. Just give it a little squeeze and it comes right off. I'll do that with the rest. And then these, I'm going to leave the tail on and use them as a garnish. All right, what I'm going to do next is take these shrimp and I'm going to cut them in half lengthwise, just like that. Because I think they'll be a little bit too large otherwise. And then we'll just pop them in this bowl. I'm going to use the same pot of water to poach the shrimp after the tomatillos come out. Um, here's the other ingredients that I'm going to put into this ceviche. There's onion, garlic, there's chilies. I've got a couple of limes here and then some seasoning that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, I probably have just enough time to cut this onion up, so let me go ahead and start. Um, it's peeled. I've got a nice flat side on it and I'm going to cut it fairly fine. This is like eight inch thick slices. And I'm not cutting all the way through to the end, but instead I'm leaving the root end intact. And what that does is it makes sure that this doesn't fall apart. Okay. And next I'm going to cut across the original cuts like that once, maybe twice. And then finally we can dice this up. I'm going to go through it one time just to make sure there's no big pieces that got away from me. And we'll leave that right here on the cutting board. Meanwhile, on the stove, another minute and we'll be there. So let's go ahead and cut up some jalapenos. Now, if I cut off the stem end and I open this up, what you'll see on the inside is ribs and seeds. The ribs represent about 60% of the heat of this chili. The seeds, about 20%, and the flesh, the remaining 20%. So if you like it hot, leave the ribs and seeds in. If you don't like it quite so hot, you can take your knife and just remove the ribs and the seeds, discard that, and just dice the flesh and you'll have something a little bit cooler, not quite so spicy. We'll do the same with the other. I'm not sure we'll need both of these, but we'll come in, cut away the ribs, cut away the seeds. If you really like spicy, you could choose a different pepper. Uh, I would reach for a serrano. I think of a jalapeno as kind of right in the middle of five in terms of heat. Serrano, bump it up to about a seven, so a little bit spicier. Okay, these ripe tomatillos are ready to come out. I'm just going to blot them dry, and we'll set them here and let them cool for a second. The others are almost there. almost there. And what I'm going to do is take this water and just turn it off and let them continue to cook. Now, at the same time, I'm going to take these shrimp and put them into that water, which is not boiling. I don't want to boil these shrimp. I'm just going to poach them. Very quickly, that water will go from 212, a boil, down to around about 160 degrees, which is ideal for poaching fish. So in they go. And very quickly, what you're going to see is they'll turn pink. And we're going to give those about three minutes. Just enough time to come back and dice up the jalapenos. Now, I always make a point of cutting the jalapenos 
in neat little dice, and I emphasize the word little because I don't think people really enjoy getting a big bite of a hot chili. It sort of detracts from the eating experience. So I'm cutting them into slices about an eighth of an inch on a side, and then we'll turn them and come back and make sure that nobody gets hurt here. Meanwhile, I'm going to come in and grab the shrimp. Some people would say if you're making a ceviche with shrimp, you could, you know, poach it until it's almost completely cooked and then let the rest of the cooking take place in the acidity that you're going to add. Um, we're going to move things along here. So I've got these cooked all the way. I'm going to put them right into ice water. I'm going to take out these other two tomatillos. These tomatillos, even though they uh, look a little bit like tomatoes, uh, and the name sounds like tomatoes, they're actually in the eggplant family. Okay, these two whole shrimp that I'm going to use as a garnish, I'm just going to cook those in this water while we're busy working. Okay, uh, some garlic in our ceviche. Doesn't sound like a bad idea. Okay, here is the shrimp. They're in the bowl, they're over ice, they're cooling down. One of my pet peeves in this world is that when people make ceviche, they add the lime juice to the fish, but they put the vegetables in there at the same time. And their rationale is that I'm flavoring the vegetables, but the reality is they go from being crisp and crunchy and vital and delicious to becoming a little tired and soft because they've been soaked for so long in lime juice. So vegetables go in later. I'm gonna put some lime juice on the shrimp and let those start cooking. This is a great little tool. If you go to a Mexican grocery, you can probably find them, this little citrus squeezer. And it's kind of counterintuitive. You might think that it should go in like that, but turn it upside down. And that's really the best way. Good. I'm going to add some salt to this shellfish. A little pinch of sugar sort of takes the edge off that lime juice. So let's add some sugar in there as well. And if I didn't have this on ice, I would take the whole bowl and just put it into the refrigerator. Next, I'm going to chop up the tomatillos. You can see how easily they give up, huh? They're very, very tender. All right. Now, we're going to imagine for just a second that this has a chance to sit for 45 minutes to an hour in the refrigerator or on ice. Let me move ahead. I'm going to put garlic in there. I'm going to put tomatillos right inside. I'm going to add onion. And then finally, I'm going to add some jalapenos. And I like it a little bit hot. Now, I want this to be fairly acidic, and you'll see the reason why in just a second. So I'm going to put in one half, one more half of a lime. Now, 
The reason for the acidity is we're going to add avocado to this right now. I'm going to put a whole avocado in there and suddenly it will become very rich and really delicious. So take the avocado in your hand and we're going to cut all the way around the outside. If you're concerned about your hand at all, put a towel in the palm of your hand just like that. And then we'll cut all the way around. And what's going to stop us from going all the way through is a big pit. There's the big pit that I was referencing, and there's the other half. I'll move this over for just a second. I think, actually, we can use all of this. I think the garlic would be great. I don't think it was too spicy. And I'm happy enough using up all of the onion. The avocado. What I would have you do is take a tablespoon and we're going to loosen the avocado from the shell just by making our way all the way around it. Good. And I'm going to start to dice this up simply by drawing my knife through it. And then we're going to dice it the other way. And that can be brought right into our ceviche. The other half that has the seed in it, we have to take the seed out. And the easiest way to do it, I know it looks a little horrifying, but put it in your hand with a towel and just knock the seed with a knife and then twist and it should pop out like that. Again, we're going to cut this into dice while it's right here in the shell. And then we'll scoop it out. into our ceviche. We are getting perilously close to being done. I think it's a good idea to sort of mash that avocado just a little bit so that it can become an enriching agent for the ceviche. These are our two shrimp that we're going to use as a garnish. Having some chips on hand is a great idea. I've got a special little bowl that I really adore that I'm going to use. And in the bottom, I'm going to put some shredded lettuce. I'm going to take some cilantro and add it to the ceviche. I'm going to add it at the end so it stays nice and bright. And uh, don't make any effort to pull the stems off or uh, take the leaves from the stems. Just take the whole bunch and begin chopping it. And when you get to the stems, just carry on chopping, just like this. Chop, 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 all the way until the end. And if you find the stems objectionable, just fluff it up here a little bit and take what's on the top out. Fluff it up again, take what's on top out, and very quickly what you discover is that's where all the stems are. The stems stay behind, the leaves sort of rise to the top, and you can discard them, but I don't think you really have to. The stems are tender and they taste delicious. Cilantro goes in. One last stir. You know, on a hot day with a cold beer and a little ceviche like this, it doesn't really get much better than that. Just so that we know where it came from, let's put a shrimp or two on the edge and we'll call it a done deal. Ceviche verde enriched with avocado, some crispy tortilla chips on the side. All that's wanting is a cold beer. Everybody loves guacamole, 
and I think everybody has a pretty good idea how to make it. Typically, I think of guacamole as avocado that is used to enrich a salsa. So it might be green guacamole with a tomatillo salsa, or it may be a tomato salsa that's enriched with avocado. Um, what you may not know is that when you travel to Mexico, you find versions of guacamole, and they have all different kinds of what I'll call add-ins, things that they add. One of the most unique is they add fruit, so it's not uncommon to find guacamole with diced peaches folded in, or um, guacamole that has grapes or even pomegranate seeds that are folded in. So we're going to make a guacamole today that has other add-ins. I'm going to take some English peas. These are fresh peas, and I'm just going to put them into the water and blanch them until they're tender. And then we'll mash those right along with the avocado. And then I also have here a summer squash. And I thought it might be a nice idea if I dice this up really small, especially the colorful part, and we can blanch that as well, throw it in with the peas, and it would lend a little texture and a little fun color to the guacamole. All right, so just take your time with it. If you have a Japanese mandolin, you can make quick work of, uh, of this. Okay, these peas are getting tender. They're not quite there yet, so let me pull this to the side. And while we wait, we'll keep busy. A little bit of onion, diced up nice and fine. All right, those peas, I think, are tender, so we're going to just toss in this summer squash, just the colorful part of it, just the outsides. We'll bring that back to one boil and then we'll put it into our, um, put it into our bowl. Uh, we're going to make this spicy with jalapenos. This time, I'm not going to take the ribs out. I'm not going to take the seeds out. I'm just going to slice it up and dice it up. And we'll have something that's a little bit hotter. Hotter because of the ribs and the seeds being left behind. As I'm chopping this up, I can tell that I left the seeds in there. It's starting to attack my eyes a little bit. I know it's going to be spicy, but I also know it's going to be delicious. All right. Now, it's time for us to pull these vegetables out of the water. And I'm going to put them in early. I want to start to mash them just a little bit, especially the peas. I want them to blend into the avocado. And I think what you'll discover is nobody will really realize that they're there. If it's the wrong time of years for fresh peas, or if you've got a partial bag of frozen peas in the freezer, just take them out and defrost them. And don't even worry about putting them into the water. Let's go ahead and put the onions and chilies in. Let's go ahead and add avocado. Cut right around the seed. Twist them apart. We'll do that with both. Now, Avocados will, given a little bit of time, begin to turn dark. And for that reason, uh, 
a little bit of acidity is not a bad idea. What this does is it neutralizes the enzymes that react when they're exposed to oxygen, and it prevents browning. Now, with a fork, let's begin the process of demolishing these avocados. Mash them right up against the side of the, of the bowl, just to break up their structure. If they're nice and ripe, this should be a pretty easy task. If they're not ripe, they might fight back a little bit, and you've learned a little something about the avocados you're working with. All right. I'm sort of a big advocate of not mashing it so fine that it becomes a puree. I like it a little bit chunky. And to that end, I'm going to stop right here. Um, we need to season it. A little bit of salt. Don't worry about pepper because we've got the chilies in there. And if you've got a punchy olive oil on hand, something with a little bite to it, it seems counterintuitive that something as rich as an avocado would need more oil. But I'm not adding oil. What I'm adding is sort of complexity, a different vegetal flavor. Let's add some cilantro. And nice big pieces. In it goes. And then, just so that we've got a contrasting color, let's add some tomato. I've got this beautiful tomato that just came out of the garden. You know, that little bit of tomato made all the difference from a visual perspective. Likewise, the, the dark green of the cilantro. Um, one last taste. Great. Now, I'm going to show you something fun to do with avocado. We're going to make little tacos. The tacos are not going to be made on tortilla chips. Instead, the tacos are going to be made on little thin slices of jicama. This is a jicama. And a jicama is a root vegetable. It has the consistency and the texture of water chestnuts. Um, it will grow to three or four pounds, but if you can get them about a pound or so, that's great. I peeled that. I sliced it very, very thin, and I put it in water, but not cold water. I put it in warm water with a little salt, because if you put it into cold water, it gets very, very stiff, like a little surfboard, a little frisbee maybe. And what I want is something that will fold in half as though it were a tortilla. So let's get a couple of pieces and we'll blot them dry. Let's get some towels. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take one of my tortillas, and I'm going to put a little bit of this guacamole inside, and then just fold it over into a taco. Same thing again. Make sure that your guacamole doesn't get too soft and runny, otherwise this won't work so well. This is a great little hors d'oeuvre. I don't think of this as an entree, maybe a starter but uh, at the end of the day, kind of a little hors d'oeuvre. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I'm trying to balance these things, I usually put a little wedge of orange or lime just to hold them up so that uh, they don't get out of control. Let's do a little bit of work here. I've got some pickled red onions, and I'm going to put some of those right over the top. I think they look great. I think they taste great. This dish is ready to be served. We made kind of an interesting guacamole with uh, add-ins based on what I had available to me in the refrigerator. And then I turned them into little tacos, but not with tortillas, with jicama. 
I think when you try these, you'll find something really light, really crunchy, very healthy and different. And I think at the end of the day, that's what people like, something that's unique. So I'd like to make a salad with you, kind of a spring salad, but really what makes this salad for me is green goddess dressing, a dressing that was developed in San Francisco back around the turn of the last century, and it features avocado and lots and lots of fresh herbs. Once you know how to make it, you'll find yourself putting it on everything. So let's get started with the salad. The first thing I wanna do is put a pan on the heat. I've got some fingerling potatoes right here, and what I'm gonna do is cut them in half They've already been cooked, but I like the idea of crisping them up. And so we'll take a few of those, and in this pan, we'll put some oil. We'll put the potatoes in, cut side down, and we'll just let them warm and get golden brown on the cut side. Next, we're gonna make the green goddess dressing. So, um, it starts out pretty simply. We're going to add some garlic, and we're going to add some shallots. Those have both been minced up nice and fine. And then I've got some anchovies here. And the anchovies, nobody likes to get a big piece of anchovy, or most people don't like to. And so I always make a point of chopping up anchovies very, very well. and then maybe even turning them into a little bit of a paste, just like this with the edge of my knife. That way, we guarantee that people get the flavor of the anchovies, sort of a wonderful savory, salty flavor without the affront of a big mouthful of anchovy. All right, next, avocado. For our green goddess, we're gonna put about a half of an avocado in. There we go. Nice and ripe, very tender. And what I'd like to do is just mash that avocado so that it's nice and fine. And it should go very, very quickly. I said it before, but it's worth saying again. If it doesn't mash up easily, then the likelihood is it's not ripe yet. Just to prevent any browning, a little splash of lemon juice is not a bad idea. And We'll start the process of seasoning it by putting some salt in. That gives the salt a chance to dissolve. Okay, next, I have here some creme fraiche. Now, creme fraiche is a cream that's been acidulated, sort of a cultured cream product. It's not unlike sour cream or even yogurt. I've used both of those in this dressing, but creme fraiche is my favorite. If you don't have it on hand, just reach for some sour cream. And we'll put creme fraiche in here and stir that in. And then we're going to turn some olive oil into this. Little by little, drop by drop, while you stir. And it should emulsify pretty easily. Creme fraiche or sour cream is a great emulsifier and the avocado itself also. And let's get started with the herbs. Uh, here is a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of tarragon, some parsley. Here's basil leaves. Gather all this up, no big stems, take those out. No big stems, take those out. Gather this all up and be a little bit rough with it. Gather it together, gather it together, and then we're gonna chop it up nice and fine. If you were going to keep this dressing for a long time, I might recommend that you use slightly more herbs and then just blanch them very, very quickly in boiling water. And what that does is it sets the color so they won't discolor. If you're gonna use it up you know, within the day, 
just use the raw fresh herbs like this and it shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue. I want these herbs to flavor and color the sauce, and so I'm going to chop them up pretty fine. As you're chopping, just take advantage of the nice curve of the knife and rock it back and forth over the herbs. Keep your fingers out of the way. As you chop them, you can sort of enjoy the aroma that sort of rises up off the board. I'm smelling tarragon and basil right now and a little bit of cilantro as well. And paying attention to that really makes you a better, a better cook. Green Goddess will stir in all the herbs. And it's a pretty remarkable amount of herbs. That's what really defines this dish, is herbs. Okay, that tastes great. Here are the greens that are gonna go on this salad. Most of these are pretty delicate greens, so I wanna dress them lightly with nothing more than oil and lemon juice. Put some salt in the bowl, dissolve it with lemon juice, add some pepper, and then whisk in the oil. Um, just a little bit of dressing on these greens for right now. I don't want them to mat down. So we'll put that on and some salt and just toss those very gently. Here's what else is going into the salad. I've got some purple potatoes and maybe you've never seen them before, but I boiled them in their jackets and then I cut them out with a little round cutter and I'm gonna put some of this vinaigrette right over the top of these potatoes just to keep them moist and give them some flavor. And then take a look here. I've got some baby carrots and I've got some asparagus tips, the vegetables that you find in the market in the spring. Those have been blanched in boiling salted water and I would say it's time for us to make a salad. Okay, first things first. I'm gonna take some of this green goddess dressing and we're gonna add it to the plate and we'll call it a day. Now, we didn't dress the greens very heavily because I didn't want to weight them down, but at this point, what I can do is put just a drop or two of vinaigrette over the top, and that's all there is to this spring vegetable salad that uses two different colors of potatoes. The green goddess dressing is our little secret, but just so that nobody feels put out, let's put some on the side. There you have it, spring vegetable salad with green goddess dressing. Now, let's say you go to the market and you find that avocados are a great bargain. Typically that means that somebody didn't really plan correctly. They didn't understand what the market demand really was going to be. And that's the time that you should stock up. And that's the time you should try some new recipes with avocado. Here's one that I'm going to share with you very, very quickly. Take a piece of rye bread and toast it. Spread it with avocado. Put a punchy extra virgin olive oil on top and then just a little bit of coarse salt. That is a great way to start a Sunday morning.